the concept of Sunnah in the Muatta of Malik ibn Anas, McGill University, Montreal, Canada, 1969. Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Shaybani, another important figure of the school of Abu Hanifa, shows the same tendency. He usually documents the Sunnah al marufa by the Hadith from the Prophet and later authorities. Therefore, his view about Hadith is almost the same as the one noted above. Ibn al-Qasim, the chief exponent of Malik, presents his point of view on the problem of Hadith as the basis of Sunnah as follows. The issue is whether a man or woman can marry without the permission of the Haggadian. Ibn al-Qasim, after giving Malik's view, i.e. that such a marriage is not valid, interprets a Hadith from Aisha when she acted as an agent in the marriage of Hafsa bin Abd rahman with Mundir bin Zubair without the permission of her guardian. In explanation of this hadith, Ibn al-Qasim has disclosed the fundamental principle of Malik's legal thought about the acceptance of hadith as a legal argument. Ibn al-Qasim says, This hadith has come down to us, and if it weren't accompanied by a practice passed on to those from whom we had taken it by their own predecessors, it would be right to follow it. But in fact, it is like those other hadith which are not accompanied by practice. Ibn al-Qasim, to establish this point, quote some examples. It is reported from the Prophet that he used to perfume during Ihram, the state of ritual consecration during the Hajj. And the Prophet said, the adulterer does not commit adultery while he is a believer, and he does not commit theft while he is a believer, even though God has revealed the punishment for fornication in the state of belief and amputation of the hands on theft while in the state of belief. Other such hadiths are reported from his companions. But these things could not gain actual force and take root. The practice was different, and the whole community and the companions themselves acted on other rules. So the hadiths were neither discredited in principle nor adopted in practice, and the usage continued to follow other hadiths which were accompanied by practice. These hadiths were passed on from the companions to the successors, and from these to those after them without rejecting or casting doubt on others, and have come down and have been transmitted. But what was neglected in practice is left aside and not regarded as authoritative, and only what is corroborated by practice is followed and so regarded. Another passage quoted by Shafi'i in his Kitab al-Um throws some more light on Malik's view. Shafi'i says, You claim to establish the Sunnah in two ways. One is to find out the authorities from amongst the companions of the Prophet, if they held an opinion that agrees with the doctrine in question, and the other is to find that men did not disagree on it, and you reject it as not being sunnah if you do not find a corresponding opinion on the part of the authorities, or if you find that men disagree. The above evidence very clearly represents two points of view on the issue of hadith as the basis of sunnah. According to Ashafi, the chief architect of the orthodox theory, the only valid, authentic, authoritative, and genuine basis of the, bas uh, basis of the sunnah is hadith, going back to the Prophet. With the school of Abu Hanifa and Malik on the other hand, the hadith as such is not the basis of sunnah. It is, must also be borne out by practice. Any hadith which is not supported by the practice is liable to be rejected or accepted at the discretion of those early jurists. Malik's view of hadith and sunnah. Al-Muatta represents the transition from the simple fiqh of the earliest period to the pure science of hadith in the latter period. The Muatta is a good gauge for judging the extent of the popularity of which hadith has gained by the time of Malik ibn Anas. It is interesting to note that through, though the hadith movement was becoming popular, hadith from the Prophet were greatly outnumbered by the hadith from the companions and from the successors. Abu Bakr al-Abhari has given a list of hadith from the Prophet, from the companions and from the successors contained in the Muatta. He said that the total number of hadith from the Muatta from the Prophet, from the companions and successors is 1,720 out of which 600 hadiths are al-Musnad, traced back to the Prophet without interruption, 222 hadiths are Mursal, i.e. lacking the first transmitter, uh, 613 are Mawquf, i.e. those which end with companions, and 285 are hadiths uh, that are the sayings of successors. There are thus altogether 822 hadiths from the Prophet, uh, as against 898 from others. Stay tuned for many more parts.